Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Yuki from Hitachi. Uh, today, I'd like to share my contribution to hyperledger fabric. Uh, I'm a researcher and uh, I'm working to develop new blockchain applications. Uh, I'm now interested in token, so I made a reference implementation of ERC20 and ERC71 on hyperledger fabric. And the code was already merged in hyperledger fabric. So in the session, I want to share the motivation, design, and how to use it. Here's the agenda. The first topic is motivation. As Brian said, as a keynote speech session, token is a very hot topic. Uh, token is expected uh, to transform our daily life or businesses. There are various tokens like cash, security, property, ticket, etc. A token represents ownership of a digital or physical assets, so we can use tokens for many use cases. So token is created uh, by tokenization. Uh, tokenization means the process of transferring rights of an existing asset into a digital token. When an owner shows the verification of ownership, the asset is converted into token on blockchain network. We use blockchain for various benefits. Uh, we, if we use blockchain for tokens, we can reduce the intermediaries and the asset is stored on secure and immutable database. So we can track the history of assets. And we can also split an asset into more virtual assets. So these features will create new ideas. So we use blockchain for tokens. So how we design tokens? When we design tokens, we design token application and infrastructure. Token application means that we design the specification of tokens, like data model or behavior. For designing tokens, we can use some token type or token standards and customize it. We also need to consider legal compliance or governance or interoperability to satisfy our use case. After designing the token application, we also design the infrastructure. To satisfy our requirement, uh, we design security, scalability, and privacy of infrastructure. And we also need identity management system. So these are the stacks of token application and infrastructure. So token became popular in B2C market first. Now B2B market is also expecting tokens because token will, uh, uh, token will transform their complex business processes or token will create new business opportunities. Uh, there are some use cases like supply chain finance, trade finance, or carbon counting. This graph shows the example of supply chain finance with token. Uh, many stakeholders can get benefit from tokens. And uh, this graph shows the typical structure of manufacturers like automotive industries or electronics industries. A large corporate buys some parts from tier one supply A and the uh, large company uh, provides uh, account receivable to tier one supply A. So tier one supply cannot get cash uh, in 30 minutes or 60 days. So if tier supply A doesn't have enough cash, they can to pay to tier two supply B. To solve issues, we can use tokens. A large corporate can issue a token representing digital payment obligation granted by financial institutions and the large company can use this token uh, to buy some parts from tier one supplier A. Then tier one supplier A can use this token to pay to tier two supplier B. 
And uh, these suppliers can also apply financing to financial institutions by using this token. So this is uh, examples of B2B tokens. However, uh, there are some issues in B2B tokens because developing token system is beyond developing smart contract. So governance model is also important. First, clear responsibility is required. B2B transactions need to be approved by legal entities which really exist. And the transaction finality is also important to make the contract effective. And the participating companies need to follow compliance policy and they need to pass audit process. Secondly, confidentiality is important. Uh, B2B transactions have many confidential, many confidential data. So uh, transactions should be kept among relevant stakeholders. At the same time, we also keep traceability because the benefit of token is uh, tracking the history of assets. So we need to consider the balance between privacy and traceability. Lastly, tokens need to be easy to use. Uh, many stakeholders join this token network, so everyone can understand the token specification correctly. To solve these issues, uh, I implemented ERC20 and ERC721 token on Hyperledger Fabric. For clear responsibility, Hyperledger Fabric provides organization-based identity model and endorsement policy, so transactions are signed and agreed by legal entities. Fabric provides a consensus mechanism called execute order validate model, so transaction finality is guaranteed. For confidentiality, Fabric provides channel and private data collections, so we can keep transaction secret. For easy to use, I used ERC20 and ERC71, uh, which uh, to standard and I will explain it in the later. And the fabric also uh, support jail uh, programming languages like JavaScript, Go, and Java, so engineers can develop smart contract uh, easily. So this is the basic idea of my solution. So let me explain the design in detail. So there are two famous token types, fungible token and non-fungible token. Fungible token is interchangeable and indistinguishable from each other. Examples include money, gold, oil, etc. Non-fungible token is unique and distinguishable from each other. We can track the ownership of each one separately Examples include artworks, houses, tickets, and etc. Various tokens are derived from fungible token or non-fungible token. And some tokens are a combination of these two tokens. In Ethereum, uh, there are standardized token specification for fungible tokens and non-fungible token. ERC20 is the interface for fungible token and ERC721 is the interface for non-fungible token. These standards define only the interface of smart contract, and the implementation is yet for each developer. So it means implementation is left for each blockchain. So I decided to develop the first implementation of ERC20 and ERC721 on the fabric because uh, we can reuse best practices of tokens and uh, we can also satisfy the strong governance requirement for B2B tokens. This, this graph shows the functions of functional token smart contract. Uh, we can 
issue tokens, then the issue token can be transferred to other users. And we can also redeem the token uh, at the end of the life cycle. And uh, users can also get the balance of each owner and uh, get the total balance. Now these functions are implementations of ERC20 and uh, I also added some functions for operations in the real use cases. So this graph shows the functions of non-fungible token smart contract. Like fungible tokens, we can issue token and then we can transfer the token to other owner and we can redeem it. And uh, non-fungible token uh, has an owner on it, so we get the owner of the token. And we can also get the balance of each owner and total supply. And the token smart contract uses identity management. User accounts are linked to current entities issued by organizations. Each organization has a certificate authority to register and enroll users. In this graph, all one has a CA, and the CA issues identity for user one. And the user one has an account in Fungible Token and the fungible token has a key value data. The key is the identity of the user, and the value is the balance of user. So this is how a user is linked to an account. Token smart contract has access control policy based on MSP ID or user identity. Only identities from permitted organization can issue unredeem tokens. In this figure, Ogran is an issuing company. So anyone under this organization can issue a token because it passes uh, access control. On the other hand, user two at org two cannot issue token because it doesn't have valid MSP ID. For transfer, only the owner or permission third party can transfer tokens. Now, wizard two can transfer his or her token because uh, he or she is an owner. So this is just a reference implementation. So you can customize the access control policy to satisfy your use case. So when I contributed the code to Fabric committee, I had some discussions with Fabric maintenance, and uh, we made some decisions to improve the quality of smart token smart contract. So let me some tips for Fabric engineers. And the first tips is to make the most of Jenkins functionalities as far as we satisfy the original goal of ERC721 specification. ERC721 has animation extension. Uh, animation extension is an uh, optional and uh, it allows a contract to publish its full list of non fungible tokens. So smart contract manages a list of tokens owned by all owners. So it has a counter containing all token. So when the number of token increases, the counter consumes huge memory. So to avoid the memory shortage, uh, we remove the entity from the token smart contract. We can do it because Chenko has an API called get state by partial convert key. So we can get list of tokens by calling uh, this function. So we can uh, save the memory space. The other tips uh, is avoiding MVCC conflict. MVCC stands for multi version concussion check. It is a common issue in public. And uh, this problem happens uh, when implementing the token. And uh, Non-fungible token has a function, balance of 
Branson returned the number of tokens owned by each owner. So the simple, the simple implementation is having a bounce record for each owner. And uh, when transferring a non fungible token, uh, we can add one or remove one uh, to uh, count the balance. However, when multiple transactions uh, transfer different tokens owned by user one, uh, many transactions try to update the balance of user one at the same time. So it leads to the MVCC conflicts and the transactions are not committed. So to avoid the issue, uh, we removed uh, user account records. So uh, instead of having an uh, independent keys, uh, we count the balance at the create time. So when balance of is called, um, tokens are searched and it returns as a number of tokens owned by each owner. So this is a reference implementation. So I think you are curious about the difference or relationship between fabric token and Ethereum token. So my idea is to select a private token for your use case. And uh, example, uh, if you need consensus between legal entities or you need clear governance, uh, we can use fabric, fab, hybrid fabric token. Or you need a token accessible to anyone. Or you need a native crypt token. Uh, you can use your same token. In other words, uh, hybrid fabric is suitable for a use case, uh, which requires uh, some governance. So the last part is uh, getting started. So this implementation is available at Fabric Samples repository. Uh, each sample contains readme, and the readme explains the test scenario and how to issue transfer token step by step. In this session, I will walk through the most important part. So if you are interested in using it, uh, please check the readme at this link. So this graph shows the system architecture of the token sample. It consists of org1 and org2, and each organization has a peer, CA, and uh, chain code. And uh, this network is launched by a script called test network. After launching the network, uh, we issue uh, or register identities. Uh, there are two users in this test scenario, Minter and recipient. So org1 CA issues an uh, identity for Minter and org2 CA issues an uh, identity for recipient. And so now we can issue and transfer tokens. So in the test scenario, uh, Minter at org1 issues some tokens to its account, then the meter transfers some tokens to recipient at org2. So this is very basic scenario. So uh, you can add more scenarios. Or this token is just a smart contract. So you can add more data model or behavior as you like. So please try it. Okay, so this is a summary of my presentation. And the motivation was uh, to create uh, tokens for B2B use cases uh, because it requires a strong governance model. So I used Hybrid Fabric uh, to satisfy the strong governance requirement. I also used the interface of ERC20 and ERC721 to use the best practices of tokens. And uh, I also uh, try to make most of fabric functionalities uh, to make simple smart contract. 
And so implementation is available at Fab Example repository. So please check and try it. This is my this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for everyone. So let's go to that job. Just a second. Q on the way session. I'm loading now. <laughs> Still loading. Sorry for everyone. It may be some technical issues. Sorry. Yuki, there are a couple of um, questions in the chat window, so maybe you can just use the chat window. Chat window, oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Question about chat. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so yeah, to share my contribution with you. If you check there, uh, who is Ricardo? Oh, yeah, what a thank you. Rafael, is there a demo of a sorry? <laughs> Let's move. So, is there a demo of getting fabric with Shenko? Oh, sorry. sorry. It's only written in JavaScript. So, but the fungible token is written and JavaScript. So, please check the repository. Next question from uh, Could you please share it? Okay. And, uh, my thread is uploaded at the uh, forum, so you can download my slides from the website. And uh, in the slide, I put the link to the repository. So please check the slide and link. So yeah. So any GitHub with tutorial. Uh, so it's not a tutorial, but uh, they do mean maybe some kind of tutorial. So uh, we explain the test scenario and uh, how to uh, set up the fabric network, how to register user entity, and uh, how to issue tokens and transfer tokens. So it it may be a uh, yeah such kind. It may, it's not a tutorial, but uh, yeah, you can walk through how to use it. So please, please read, check that read me. Okay. Question. Okay, so what are the difficulties with creating fab tokens compared with ERC20 and ERC721? Price. Hmm, good question. So, so yeah, the most 
the big difference is uh, programming language. Yeah, so as you know, uh, original is Ethereum token uh, uh, is sorry, and uh, fabric smart contracts isn't written Go or JavaScript. So yeah, familiar with Go or JavaScript, uh, fabric token may be a good starting point. And uh, if you are familiar with Solidity and uh, you want to use uh, uh, as a crypto token or Ethereum tokens, you can start from the Ethereum. Oh, sorry. Next question. Oh, sorry. And uh, I mean, what difficulties do you foresee using for token for production quality like network? Production problem. Okay. Yeah, it's a good question. So for production use, and uh, I think there's issues. And the first issue is the uh, um, first issue is the uh, quality of smart contract. So, uh, as you know, there are some famous instances of the security or bug in smart contract. So, for production, uh, we need to test the smart contract carefully uh, to check uh, if there's no bugs. Or if you find some bugs as a production operation, you need to fix it immediately and uh, to save our assets. So, okay, so now, okay, it will be the last question. So, thank you, Marcus. Uh, to reward a supplier in a Hybrid fabric supply chain for good performance. We usually recommend a fabric token or just a simple virtual ecosystem. If token or is 20 uh, So, I'm sorry, I can't catch the context. So, I'm sorry if I'm very long. But uh, I think we can use uh, this token or Customized token for supply chain, you know, and token represents the ownership of uh, physical assets. So, supply chain means uh, transfer assets to um, stakeholders in the network. So, yeah, I think we can apply uh, these tokens to the supply chain network. Okay, so yeah, again, so thank you for everyone. I am very happy to be here with you today. So I got many good feedback from you. So I appreciate it you. So yeah, as I mentioned, uh, the site is available at the Hyperledger Grow Forum site. So please download the site and check the repository. And uh, if you have any feedback, uh, please uh, let me know, or uh, you can just post it to the uh, GitHub or uh, Fabric chat, Fabric chat. So thank you everyone. Yeah, so have a good day and please enjoy the uh, other sessions. Thank you, bye.